Hey everybody, grace and peace multiply to you in the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Most High God, the Son of the Most High God, the Savior to those that keep His commandments. Hope you're having a wonderful day. It's Thursday. Beautiful weather. Thank God we woke up to see another day. You know what I'm saying? Just want to touch on one thing. Well, I want to touch on many things, but, you know, spiritually, of course. But I, I want to touch on something that, you know, kind of kind of vexed me because I was talking to somebody, you know, close friend of mine that uh, let me know that they are still, to this day, not really guarding themselves from some false prophets out here. You know, not, not really... You know, it basically, you know, believing, you know, some things false prophecies say, and 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 you know, I'm gonna tell you something that my friend told me, and told me when you know better, you do better. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, if you know better, then you should be doing better. You shouldn't be letting these false prophets influence you. You know, because we got a lot of false prophets out here perverting and twisting doctrine and you know got a lot of them with 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 these uh evil wicked spirits on them. you know and we see them all the time they so charming and charismatic and you know very extremely attractive and you know we are visual people no doubt about that however you got to be strong in this thing because Desires and lust of the physical being or the flesh, it's not gonna get you nowhere. Believe me. Believe you me. You can you can meet somebody that's you be like, oh they fine. Dang. But what's on the inside of that person? Have you really dug down deep to find out what's really going on? You know? Some people got some got some bad spirits on. They got some really sneaky, conniving spirits on them. And, and the devil, you know, that's how he is. He's subtle. You know, he's very smooth. You know, he'll come to you, he'll twist you up on some things. You, man, you go right along with it. But God's angels are innumerable, right? Well, a third part of those innumerable, innumerable angels got kicked out of heaven. And where are they at? They right down here with us. So we gotta be strong. You know, the scriptures say, try the spirits. You 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 remember well those in my generation, you remember that old commercial talking about E. F. Hutton? You know how they say when E. F. Hutton step in the room, everybody get quiet, everybody trying to hear what's going on. Has it ever happened to you? You ever step in the room? Everybody's just quiet. Because you got a different spirit on you than most of them in there, if not all. You got to try the spirits. Read you a few scriptures. First John chapter 4. Beginning with verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit. That's plain and simple. Believe not every spirit. I can show you in, uh, I believe it's the book of Pro book of. Psalms or Proverbs will tell you, believe, take heed and not every word that is spoken. Because we got some big lies out here. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to start over. Believe, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. Verse 2, hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Verse 3, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh is not of God. And uh, the same friend of mine, you know, these false prophet brothers and sisters, they, uh, they don't believe in Jesus. What I just read to you out the scripture, what I just read you out of the word of God. You know, I done said it before, we got messianics and non-messianics, but I'm like this. If, if you don't believe in the Messiah, 
then you still should be doing your animal sacrifices then because you don't believe that the Son of God came to die for our sins. So you are in error. You have that spirit of error. But I want the spirit of truth, don't you? But uh, let me show you something. Show you uh, something in the Old Testament right quick. I'm not going to be long with it today. <laughs> Guaranteed. Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29, beginning with verse 4. You know, I could very easily go to Jeremiah 23 where he say, Woe be unto the pastors that scatter the sheep of my pastor. But you know, I'm not going to go there because we know that's a lot of stuff. We know that's big time going on today. But um, Jeremiah 29, beginning with verse 4. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that I carried away captives. That's us. <laughs> Whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Spiritual Babylon going on right now. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people in the world don't know it. Verse 5, build ye houses and dwell in them, plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Verse 6, take ye wives and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that they may be increased and not diminished. That they may be increased and not diminished while you're going through this captivity. Because it's, it's evident that we on the bottom of society and the whole world is against us because we are dealing with nothing but the truth. We don't deal with tradition. We don't deal with foolishness. You know what I'm saying? But they love it. <laughs> and I wanted to go I want to go in on this verse six because we got a lot of brothers and sisters that think that it's okay to have multiple wives. And you know, it's proven in the Old Testament. You know, they try to attack the scriptures in the New Testament on having more than one wife, you know, where it says don't do it. But it's in the Old Testament too. So I'm not going to go there today. That's another lesson. But uh, anyway, verse 7, And seek the peace of the city whither I have caused you to be carried away captive, and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. That's if you keep God's law, statutes, and commandments. Otherwise, you're going to always be in trouble, you know, more than you should be. Verse, verse 8, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, <laughs> neither hearken to your dreams which ye have caused to be dreams. Verse 9, for they, prophesy, for they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them. What name is that? If you're trying to teach the word of God to uh, an Asian that just came to America from China that barely speak English, uh, and you say Ahia, do you think that Asian gonna know who you're talking about? Maybe even if you say Yahshua. <laughs> what, what name is above every name? What, what is the name written in the scriptures that is above every name? That's Jesus. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. Okay. Now, go to John 6. John chapter 6. One verse here. Because many, many people, many of us, I mean, we, we got to get it together. It's just, it's just, it's just that, that plain and simple. You know, I'm, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat the word of God. You, you know you know right from wrong. You know what you got to do. And once you be awakened and come into this thing and realize how glorious it is, hey, you got many brothers and sisters that are willing to be there for you and teach you and give you knowledge, wisdom, and understanding and guidance to make sure that, hey, we're not bringing no false doctrine. We're not, we're not faking the funk, as they say. You know what I'm saying? This is the real deal here. Anybody ain't on this, you ain't on nothing. <laughs> For real. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. 
This is Jesus saying right here, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The Holy Bible, this is his word. It is talking about God and his people. And these words give you knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And it gives you edification of the scriptures, the, the holy word of God, God and his people, prophecy, prophecy in the past, prophecy in the present, and prophecy yet to come. Don't Jesus say he is the same yesterday, today, and forever? <laughs> A lot of people don't know that that God in the Old Testament was Jesus. But anyway, Mark chapter 4. Two more scriptures here. And I'm done with you. Mark chapter 4. No, Mark chapter 5. Mark, Mark, beginning with verse 1. Mark chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could buy him, no, not with chains. This dude was breaking chains and everything. He was like the Incredible Hulk or something. All right. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder. Plucked asunder, that means split in two by him and the fetters broken in pieces neither could any man tame him verse 5 and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones now that's a crazy dude right eh? verse verse 7 verse 7 no verse 6 but when he saw jesus afar off he ran and worshiped him verse 7 and cried with a loud voice and said what have i to do with thee jesus thou son of the most high god what so all my hebrew brothers and sisters I mean, not to boast or brag, but I know who I am. I am one of the 12 tribes of Israel. I am a Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? So to my brothers and sisters, what does this say right here? Jesus, thou son of the most high God. Did it say Ahia? Did it say Yahshua? No, it said Jesus. Same person. But we ain't gonna get into the name thing. Anyway, Jesus, thou son of the most high God, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. See, this unclean spirit got the fear of the Lord in him. Here it is, we don't fear the Lord no more. You know what I'm saying? We think we can do everything we want to do and still get into God's kingdom. That is a lie. You got to humble yourself and fear the Lord. And by fearing the Lord, you keep his commandments. It's just that simple. Uh, one more, one more script. I'm gonna go to the Old Testament. Well, I might, I might have got off the track. I might, you know what I'm saying, but I came right back. Anyway, Psalm 78. You got to, you got to be careful. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Somebody bring something that is not in this book, not in the scriptures. Don't believe it. Try the spirits. They can be nice to you all they want to, but if they doctrine don't line up with the word of God, it's a, it's a problem. That's a serious problem. Psalm 78, beginning with verse 40. How often did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? This is talking about the children of Israel when they was uh, led by the hand of Moses and the Most High was with them. You know what I'm saying? They shoes didn't wax old. You know what I'm saying? They clothes didn't get messed up. And he fed them with food and water. And they still complained, complained, complained. They murmured against the Lord over and over again. Didn't appreciate him for nothing. That's still going on today. <laughs> Lord bless us. Wake up, see another day. We still want to do what we want to do. But anyway. Verse 41, yea, they turned back and tempted God. Whoa. After all he did for them in the wilderness, they tempted God hmm. and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remember not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Verse 43, how he had wrought signs in Egypt. How he wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan. And he, 
he sent divers, he sent divers sorts of flies among them, which devoured them, and frogs, which destroyed them. He gave also their increase unto the caterpillar, and their labor unto the locust. So this is talking about when he brought them ten plagues on the Egyptians. That's why the Lord, you know, that's why it trips me out how people talk about, you know, I'm, I'm a pharaoh and this and that. No, no, you're not. You are not an Egyptian. You know what I'm saying? You think you are. Believe me, I used to be all into that. All into that. You are not an Egyptian. You don't come from no Egypt. You know, Egypt to us means bondage, slavery, and captivity. Wake up and find out. Read this book and find out who you are. Verse 44. And had turned their rivers into blood and their floods that they could not drink. He sent divers sorts of flies among them which devoured them and frogs which destroyed them. Verse 46. He had gave also their increase unto the caterpillar, caterpillar and their labor unto the locusts. Verse 47. He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore trees with frost. He gave up their cattle also to the hail and their flocks to hot thunderbolts. The Lord brought these ten plagues down on Egypt. And you know what? The last plague he did? He told Pharaoh, he told Moses to tell Pharaoh he's going to kill his son, his firstborn. And all the firstborn in Egypt died. And Pharaoh knew then that this was the Lord. He wasn't, this, this wasn't no magic. This was the creator of all things doing this to him. Verse 49, he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger wrath and indignation and trouble by sending an evil angel by sending evil angels among them. Any evil angels on this earth right now? And they working. They never have a day off. That's why I say try the spirits. Grace and peace multiply to you in the knowledge wisdom of the Most High God and the Son of the Most High God, the Savior to those that keep his commandments.